camera just had a message that said focus failure. I think we should have a message on our computers every time we open up Twitter. Welcome back to the JW Thoughts channel. My name is Wally and today we have news coming out of the Watchtower headquarters and it's pretty funny and a little bit interesting. So I hope you do enjoy. Don't forget to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel and let's do this. How's the new headquarters project at Ramapo, New York progressing? We're thrilled to inform you that on December 28, 2022, the town board of Ramapo approved the zoning for the facility and gave approval for tree removal. This key approval will allow the overall project to move forward, as was the case for the Warwick project, Thousands of volunteers from the United States will be needed for Ramapo. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for offering yourselves willingly, for your heartfelt prayers, and for your generous donations in behalf of the Ramapo Project. Ah, uh, yes, as we approach the last of the last days, as we inch ever closer to the end of this system of things, we're starting the groundwork on this massive new media studio center thing in Ramapo, New York. Apparently that is what is necessary as we are on the cusp of a worldwide cataclysm. So at least you know that uh, you have very responsible, reasonable leaders if you are one of Jehovah's Witnesses. You may recall that in our last update, we informed you about what's happening in Norway. We were shocked when we received a letter from government authorities in Oslo, Norway, threatening to remove our registration as a religious community. We're happy to update you on this case. On December 22nd, 2022, the authorities announced their decision to deregister Jehovah's Witnesses as a religious community in Norway. Then, on December 28th, we filed an injunction application with the Oslo District Court, asking them to suspend the deregistration until the matter had been resolved by the court. On December 30th, the court granted a temporary injunction. We're very grateful to the Oslo District Court for granting this injunction. Please continue to pray for a successful outcome. Now, I already made an entire video about the Norway situation, but just to give a, a little bit of clarification to what they're saying here, because it might be confusing. Uh, Watchtower lost their funding that they were getting as a religious organization, as all religious organizations do in Norway. Uh, so they lost that, and they're not getting that back. That has nothing to do with what he's saying here. And then there was another aspect of losing their ability to register as a religion, which their main concern with that was being able to hold religion religious ceremonies and do and or hold wedding ceremonies. So what happened basically is they filed their proper paperwork saying, hey, uh, we would like to have this argued in court. And so can you give us a stay of execution, essentially, just hold off a bit. And the Norwegian government said, okay, but that's it. It hasn't been argued yet. And as far as the latest updates that I've seen or that I'm aware of, the state actually plans on uh, arguing against them even having this little injunction before it's argued in court because Watchtower doesn't have any new points. They're not, they don't have any new light. Uh, it's a situation of have you guys changed your policies or have you not changed your policies? Anything else, you're just wasting the state's time. So this, all they're saying is, hey, let's pat ourselves on the back and keep praying for us. We'll count this as a blessing and a victory because we're sufficiently using legal chicanery in order to waste the state's time and give them arguments 
they've already heard before. So not a lot of new information, in my personal opinion, that's come of all of this. It's just Watchtower clowning around, trying desperately to hold on and make the same old arguments over and over and over again. So I don't really know what their endgame is, but this isn't some sort of legal victory. Around the world, our brothers and sisters are also busy with disaster relief. For example, some months ago, it was anticipated that many brothers and sisters in Ukraine would need warm clothing for the winter. So over 200 congregations in Germany were invited to donate clothing and other basic items. What was the result? Approximately 36,000 pieces of clothing and 6,500 pairs of shoes were generously donated. With assistance from the Poland branch, 105 pallets with 23.7 metric tons of donated clothing were shipped by truck to Ukraine. One grateful brother said, the items we received as humanitarian aid help us to endure the cold and wet weather. It was warm when I had to flee from my home and I could not take along any warm clothes. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for your care. This is vivid evidence of the love of Jehovah, our Father. Following recent natural disasters, the reconstruction work is progressing well in Cuba, Nigeria, the Philippines, Puerto Rico, the United States, and elsewhere. We keep all those affected by disasters and those providing relief in our prayers. And we thank all of you for your generous contributions, which help us to care for our brothers and sisters facing these disasters. Thank you. So I have a video that's going to be coming out in the next day or two that's uh, kind of talking about this a little bit more in depth, so I won't uh, give you a segment that's from the Department of Redundancy Department, but I do find it interesting. We hear, Here we have a perfect example of the brothers and sisters, it, like local brothers and sisters, that are doing relief work that has nothing to do with Watchtower. So then when he goes and says, and we thank you for your donations, he, he's confusing and scrambling people's brains when, when you're doing this. It wasn't the organization that did anything. It was the local brothers and sisters. Maybe they helped with shipping. Maybe. We don't really know whether or not that was the case. But the organization doesn't do anything. And when he's talking about this, especially uh, using you know the phrase humanitarian aid, I think the reason they're doing that is because they need segments like this to try and show governments that they are a functioning charity. Again, uh, a video, it'll be out either tomorrow or the next day, and uh, it goes into this in a little bit more in depth. But here, I just had to comment on it because I hate when Watchtower's always taking credit for the generosity of people and making it seem like it's a privilege or a blessing coming from the governing body or Jehovah. Since June 2022, when we return to in-person forms of the ministry, we've been hearing exciting reports from the field. We had an increase. 20% more studies. 15% increase. Increase. Over 290,000 additional Bible studies. 30,000 more Bible studies. 4% increase. 47,000 more Bible studies. It's exciting to see Jehovah blessing the work. And we had our 27th consecutive peak. Tremendous increase have increased by more than 60,000. Wasn't that encouraging? Now, as all of us know, the Jehovah's Witnesses are having less people preaching. They're having less people show up at their meetings. And they're having less people get baptized. So they have to try desperately to cook the numbers in some way or another. So how are they going to do that? Well, look at all the Bible studies we have and look at the potential, you know, for growth that this organization might see. But 
We're still waiting for the annual report. I'm sure it's going to be out here in the next uh, week or two, I would say. So we'll have to take a look and see what the numbers look like. But to me, this looks like they're doing a little damage control before they actually release that annual report. Uh, as most of you guys know, their service year goes from September to September. And usually they release their annual report in like November or December. And now here we're in, you know, nearly halfway through January. And we're still waiting, so I don't know what that's going to look like. A lot of people suggest that we can't really trust their numbers. I don't really know, but it will be interesting to see if they do have a significant uh, decrease in the amount of active Jehovah's Witnesses that are preaching. But it's okay, because we have this increase in Bible studies. And my question is... Is it really an increase in Bible studies, or are they just changing the way they report? Remember way back when, when you had to have an established routine and be studying out of a book, you know, and it has to be going for at least like four times, and then they changed it and said, well, you only need to talk to a person twice and have a regular scheduled study. Now, I went on JW.org to try and see what the language is currently, and all I could find was... Even if you talk to someone on their doorstep regularly, you're having a Bible study. So I think they're just lowering the bar, and that way it looks like they're having more Bible studies. And, oh, sorry, I forgot the big one. Uh, people can study with their children. Now, we know that there was a, a, a funny expression called the pandemic baby, because a lot of people were having babies during the pandemic whenever they were staying at home. Could this be a case of maybe... Jehovah's Witnesses just had more babies, and that's why the Bible studies were increased, because now you can count, you know, talking to your toddler as, as a Bible study, because they're an unbaptized publisher. It might be the case that we're just getting this amalgamation of pandemic babies and them lowering the standard of what a Bible study is, because it simply is not the case that they have more interest from non-Jehovah's Witnesses looking to convert to become Jehovah's Witnesses. That is not happening. So this was probably the one statistic that they could point to. But again, this was just looking at the statistics in a very particular way and not an actual increase in interest. Now, speaking of lowering the bar and lowering the standard, here's the moment we've all been waiting for. The big news from Watchtower. The governing body decided back in 1999 to adjust the hour requirements for the pioneers. Now, 24 years later, as world conditions continue to deteriorate, the governing body sees that our pioneers are facing similar challenges. Therefore, we are very pleased to announce that the governing body has decided to adjust the hour requirements for pioneers effective March 1st, 2023. You may want to get a pen or something to write this down. Are you ready? Here are the new requirements. For regular pioneers, the requirement will now be 600 hours per year. That is an average of 50 hours per month. Let's have a little bit of fun and go back in time. In a 1943 watchtower talking about righteous requirements, uh, we had uh, the instructions that regular pioneers were required to get 150 hours per month and that a ordinary publisher was expected to be getting 60 hours per month. Now, I come from a long line of pioneers. My great-grandma and my grandma were some of these battle-hardened pioneers that had been doing it for decades and decades and decades, right? And I can tell you from my experience that it really annoyed them that they had spent decades working so hard for Watchtower, for having the, the title of pioneer, for having those special spiritual privileges or whatever to be a pioneer, and yet they keep lowering the standard over and over again. Uh, imagine if you worked for a company for you know decades and in order to get health benefits, you had to work 150 hours and then you move down the decades and then all of a sudden it's, it's a 50 hour requirement to get the health benefits. You'd be like, 
well, man, I was really busting my ass before it, just to get those health benefits. And now it's so, so easy. You guys are soft now. But if, if that was a normal company, you could say, well, you know, it's just run by man. But Watchtower doesn't claim that they're just run by men. Now, do they? They say that this is a loving provision from God. So I want Watchtower to try and explain why it was loving for God, for Jesus, to give instructions that required uh, people, people's lives to be more difficult. It required, if you want this special privilege, if you want to just be a publisher, it, you need to be spending 60 hours per month. Why did God want people in the 40s lives to be more difficult than he does in 2023? Now, what's the real reason for this change? Numbers. They just care about the numbers, the optics. They need something to show that, boy, oh boy, look at all the pioneers that we've picked up. It's a evidence of Jehovah's blessing and an increase. We have an increased amount of pioneers. Well, as we know, and I did a video uh, previously uh, about you know how they lowered or removed the hour requirement entirely. Uh, for pioneering and basically said anyone can pioneer it was like an Oprah show you get to be a pioneer you get to be a pioneer and as soon as they said okay we're going to be required you know starting the hour requirement again I'm guessing that this is reactionary and they had a insane amount of people saying sorry take me off the pioneer list there's no way I can do 70 hours per month and this is a desperation move solely to not look like, oh my God, we lost like half or 60% of all of the pioneers in the world because we changed this policy. So I'm very curious to see what it's going to look like next year, because that's when you're going to be able to see the effects of all of these different changes that have taken place. For auxiliary pioneers, the requirement will now be 30 hours, but notice this. This is very exciting. During March and April, and during the month of the circuit overseer's visit, publishers can choose to auxiliary pioneer with a reduced hour requirement of 15 hours. This should make it possible for many more of us to share as auxiliary pioneers during those months of special activity. What about special pioneers and missionaries? they will now have an hour requirement of 100 hours per month. Sisters who are serving as special pioneers or missionaries and who are 40 years of age or older have a reduced hour requirement of 90 hours. How should we view these adjustments? This is powerful evidence of the great love and tender concern that Jehovah feels for his people. Now they're watering things down even more. If you want to be an auxiliary pioneer, now all you have to do on these special months of activity is 15 hours per month. So we've gone from a situation where in order to be a, a regular publisher that was in good standing, you would need to do 60 hours per month. Now, if you want to have this special title, can you at least put in 15 guys? Can you just do 15 hours per month for us? It's absolutely insane to me, but it's not surprising because when I was a Jehovah's Witness and they had the special arrangement during the, <clears throat> excuse me, during the memorial campaigns where it removed the uh, 60 hour, uh, I think it was 60 hours, no, and then it went down to 50 hours for auxiliary pioneering. And then it went all the way down to 30 hours for auxiliary pioneering. Uh, I thought that that was going to become a permanent change while I was still a witness. I even talked about it with people uh, for years saying, hey, I'm pretty sure they're going to lower the hour requirement for pioneers and auxiliary pioneers. Look at the history. They've continuously been lowering, lowering, and lowering, and lowering the standard in order to maintain the numbers, doesn't it seem likely that they're going to be lowering it even more? You know, you could even incite a rebellion. Hey, if there's any pioneers watching this, all of you quit pioneering right now 
and they'll lower the bar even farther down to 30 hours per month and then you can just sign back up at after the bar is lowered so you know power to the people baby don't let watchtower dictate your lives take control of your own anyway i hope you guys enjoyed the uh, governing body update first one for the year and uh wow it was uh, a little bit interesting this time around if you're still around don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel and i will see you next time